So I was just chilling the other day and my friend came up to me and he said, Hey, at Phil Super, can you possibly paint the wheels for my WRX? And I said, sure. The wheels he had were just a little bit worn as you could see and they needed a bit of touch up before I can go ahead and start painting them. There was curb rash, some of the faces had been scuffed, and pretty much anywhere that you see silver is somewhere that needed some repairs. When it comes to fixing curb rash in cars, there are a lot of different methods that you can use. One of the most common ones is to use body filler, other people will use super glue or whatever it may be, something that's hard and can fill the gaps that are relatively small, and something that can be sanded pretty easily. I chose to go with glazing putty because I found it to be the easiest to work with. It's very easy to apply, doesn't require any additives to make it dry, and most importantly, it's incredibly easy to sand. I apply it straight to the wheel, then gently spread it with my finger, squishing it deep into the marred areas so I get the best bond possible. After applying the putty, I let the wheels sit for 24 hours before I sanded them down. The putty takes longer to dry since there's no added catalyst, meaning rushing the wait time can easily result in having to redo the putty application process. Once fully dry though, I sanded the putty down with 220 grit sandpaper. The putty does clog the sandpaper though, so make sure to have extra sheets lying around. For sanding a flat surface, I use some sort of block in order to keep the sandpaper even. If you just sand a flat surface with only your hand, you'll very easily sand an indent from the uneven pressure of your finger. You can generally use any flat block like a piece of wood or sanding block specific for bodywork. In this case, I use a sanding sponge since the face of the wheel had a slight curvature to it. Once I finished sanding down the putty, I wet sanded the entire wheel with 600 grit sandpaper. If you don't wet sand with the grit this fine, the sandpaper will immediately clog up. You can spray the wheel with water, dip the sandpaper in water, or both in order to sand this way. After each wheel though, you'll need to get a new piece of sandpaper. This is a long and boring process if I'm being honest, but just relax, find some good music, and take your time with it. Because if you rush this process, the paint won't stick to the wheel, and all the work you'll do, smoothing the bad areas, and the work you'll do in painting it next, will all go to waste.
When it comes to painting wheels, messing them off is extremely easy. All you need is paper and scissors. Cut out a whole bunch of business card sized pieces of paper, then lay them around the edges of the wheel. There's no need for tape, which is very nice. Even if it's not absolutely perfect, extra paint will wear off from the tire pretty quickly, so it's no big deal if you accidentally have a little overspray. As for the paint itself, it all depends on what color you want. In this case, I'm painting the wheels a gloss metallic black. I use four different types of paint. Two layers of primer, two layers of gloss black base, two dust layers of black metallic flake, and three layers of clear gloss coat. After that, I let the wheels dry overnight before removing the masking and calling it good. Overall, you can get a pretty high quality job from just rattle cans alone, you just have to be patient. I'm not going to lie to you and say it's easy to get it right first try, but the more experience you get, the easier it gets, so don't be afraid to give it a go on some old wheels.